hear what you're saying. It's 3D, yeah. I hear what you're saying. Anyway, I'm Johnny Jungle Guts, and this is Let's Gay. I'm Johnny Jungle Guts, the top notch gamer, aka the top notch gamer. <laughs> and I'm here today with artists, performance artists, working in video, doing writing, movement, so many different things. Lex Brown. Hi. Thanks so much for coming on. Whoa, I'm like, I didn't even know. We're we're, we're on rolling. the internet. Uh, and Lex, you are here in LA. I saw mm -hmm. you posted on Instagram that you were here in LA, and so I had to get in touch because I wanted to have you on the show because I'd heard you'd written a book about drones and different a sort of science fiction novel, and I just couldn't wait to have you on the show. What brings you to LA? Um, I'm here because I just finished last night. I finished the sixth night I was performing I did two shows a night at this um this pop-up called monkey town that's bit that's run by I this like guy the named name. Mo yeah it's run by this guy Montgomery not and it's cool. been, he's been doing it for I think like 10 years or something wow. and it's like there's like this huge four four screen like projection cube and then you eat this amazing dinner inside of it and there's this video program with like all these different videos and then I so I performed twice a night for six nights. And so it's a very specific type of installation because you're you're using a four wall a projection cube that's projecting onto all four walls. Yeah. Well, for my performance, I uh I drove a truck into the space and I performed outside of the cube, wow. and so I only used one uh one screen. I wanted to use all four screens, but just I don't know the way things came together. Sure. Like I just started to like prioritize what I wanted to do. And what are we talking about in this performance? What are we getting into? We're getting into the real shit of today. We're getting into yes. we're getting into politics. I mean, particularly we're getting into racism, mm -hmm. and um, and also I mean, like the songs that I wrote were kind of about like my ancestry a little bit. I mean, one was like a kind of more storytelling, evocative mood song. Okay. Then there's a rap, guest, right. uh, uh political mm -hmm. but I, I could i could do a little bit of it oh my god i would i would love I it rap. okay yeah um sometimes i got a bad attitude better not come for me and my grandma little miss red riding hood because there's bigger things out here than those lion bears and wolves there's a dark force trying to get at me every time i'm doing good and is it inside of my head am i tripping off of this shit there's a hunter with a swat team and he's suicide equipped so my compass and my headspace and he's gaining on me quick trying to pull stockholm and tell me that i should go with him uh he cocks his gun one time he been here for a minute you just look for the money and you see what and you see that he did it. Imperialism, they getting us where they where we live in. Leave no job, shoot us up, and they get no conviction. Sometimes I got a bad attitude. Better not come for me and my grandma, Little Miss Red Riding Hood. Cause there's bigger things out here than those lion bears and wolves. The sociopath trying to get at me. Every time I'm doing good, he asks me why is you fussing? Because I have a concussion. I'm so over the top. Don't need a drop of robot tussin. I'm three sheets to the wind. I'm so fed up on the sprint. I need to change my plan and get my service from Horizon or jump off over a ledge. Humpty Dumpty my shit. Cause I'm overproductive but anxious and depressive. They busting heads in cement. And they raising the rent. I love Obama, but I gave up hope 40 days of Lent. That 40 that never came, except in the ounces of drink. 40 dead in Chicago, one Memorial Day. Massacred in Orlando, I should get me a Rambo. With the pain and anger, I might go full commando. Sylvester, I'm a Sambo, give a fuck about a Lambo. My education's worth more than the Godfather Brando. Back to Africa, Jambo, or the Canada Gambo. I can't breathe, I can't beat any ink, cause I play the trombone. Wow. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for doing that today. Exclusive. That was an Lex Brown exclusive. So let's I talk about that. And then I talk about the word nigger in many different ways. <laughs> I talk <laughs> about okay. the word nigger because about? my, so then I talk about my great, great, grand, great, great, great grandfather who was a slave master, a white slave master. Oh, wow. Who owned my great great grandmother, and like the last thing he said to her before he went to fight for the Confederacy so he could continue owning her as human property was he was like, Be a good nigger, and like, wow. you know, know your place, be complacent. And then, so yeah, then, the, then from there in the performance, I kind of, you know, every night's a little different, but 
throughout the week, the bases I sort of covered were just sort of talking about institutional racism and why racism sucks for everybody, no matter what your race or ethnicity is, and or even if you're not like even nationalized as an American, but you're in America, like why it's just bad. It's just bad. Racism's bad. And I talk about then I like you know try to keep it light sometimes little humorous analogies um, about being in season three of America. Like, <laughs> season three is like always a season where it's like things get weird. Like they've kind of run out of like the the like the initial plot lines, and you're like, where's this show going? Yeah. I'm like what's gonna happen? Yeah. And then I sort of talk about just like depression that I'm dealing with and family history stuff and I sing a song about my grandma a mm -hmm. slow slow song yeah. so it was a heavy performance now how what I want to know is this is a this is a fascinating history you're telling me about mm -hmm. how did you how did you learn about this this narrative mm -hmm. and in your history with your great great grandfather and your great grandmother yeah. I learned about it my mom does a lot of ancestry stuff and she's always done it and I I just like honestly to be completely honest it's because I watched Lemonade and I was like wait I want to feel like this like when Beyonce's standing around with like all of her sisters I'm like yeah that's me but like also like where's <laughs> my like well, I'm cuz I'm like where am I from and I'm like always kind of known you know like where people in my family are from but I didn't really really know and so I I spent a lot of time talking to my mom just about like you know, where is everybody from? Where do they move from? What are the stories? And so that was just like one of the story. Like on the other, so that's my dad, that's my mom's dad's grandmother that that story is about. Mm -hmm. But on my mom's mom's side, like somebody, like my great great grandfather, his name is like Johnny Stableson. Okay. And he was like apparently like Chinese. Wow. Pirate, so the rumors. I like really hope that's true because I just think that's really cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I learned a lot about um, about like my ancestry and like the people that I come from. It's really important to know that. Yeah. You know, I feel like so many people. Okay, I was just watching this documentary called Welcome to Leith on Netflix. It's really good. Okay. And it's about. It's really interesting. It's about this small town in like North Dakota or something. Like twenty six people live there. And then this other this guy who's like one of the preeminent like white supremacists oh boy. in the country, he like tries to get all these other white supremacists to like move there and take over the town because it's so small that they can run local government there. Uh huh, yeah. And like just like establish a new town or something. And I don't know. It's a really interesting documentary, but then he does a DNA test, this, like, white supremacist dude, and sure. he finds out that he's, like, only, like, I don't know, 60% <laughs> or, like, 70%, like, Caucasian. Okay. And then, like, the he has, like, all of this, like, blood from Africa, and Ooh. it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's, like, funny. I don't know. Like, everybody. It's, it's like the Dave Chappelle it's all mixed skit up. come to life a little bit. Not quite. As yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> like the, kind of like the reverse or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Northern Virginia, but I was born in California. I'm from Oakland oh, okay. Originally, mm -hmm. but yeah, I grew up in Nova. Okay. I've only been to Virginia a little bit, Alexandria, but how was that growing up in Virginia? It's like so. I mean, I had fun with like having friends i had very comfortable childhood great i grew up in a, a like a very middle class upper middle class neighborhood mm -hmm. and um that was cool but it's very i don't know northern virginia is so weird i see it so differently now than when you were there yeah because like i think like growing up i always wanted to get out of there because it's so boring to, there's nothing to do there. Okay. And everybody there is very wealthy, and everybody there really feels like they have the same goals and values and aspirations uh -huh. in life. And I feel like it's, for a lot of people, it's like their ending point. So to grow up in a place that's like, that's where people are trying to get, you know, like to end there, like you want to get out, or at least for me, it's like, 
people in the area wanted to aspired. aspire to live where you yeah. kind of lived. Right. So when you so like growing up there, it's like I don't know. I just always wanted to get out. Like for example, there was no there was no like punk culture or like countercultures or underground anything. Like no like sure. there was no none of that. There were no no scenes of any kind. No like um like stuff that. People who I'm friends with now, I'm like, wait, that's so cool that you did that when you were a teenager. Like, zines, so oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Like, bands. Like, none of, I didn't have any of that. So, I was just always, always wanted to get out of there. And, um, it's just, it's weird because it's kind of, I met one girl once who described it as, like, it feels like you're a minority report in Northern Virginia. Like, there's, like, it feels like there's secrets around. Because it's, oh, that's where, yeah. like, the CIA is. And oh, like really? FBI, yeah. That's, like, like CIA's in Langley, and that's, like, about 20 minutes away from right. where I live. So it's, like, very... A lot of people working who work in government, and, um... I don't know. Growing up, I just always wanted to get out. And so where did you go when you got out? And so... Well, I went to Princeton for undergrad. Oh, which okay. Was, My home state of so, New Jersey? Yeah, and it's not really... Like getting out because Princeton, New Jersey is It's so preppy. Like, yeah, that's like, it's just like where I grew up. But in college, I felt like, you know, a lot of people, most of the people from my high school, I went to a science and tech high school, like a magnet school, mm -hmm. and, and most of the people from my high school went to either UVA or William & Mary or Virginia Tech. So mm -hmm. a lot of people stayed like, and are still uh, really close friends with their high school friends. I'm still friends with like close with some of my high school friends yeah. too um but yeah it definitely it did felt like like i had more black friends at princeton than i ever than i ever did at any right, other point growing, yeah. in my life which is not like it was more diverse yeah than any other place i'd ever been so that was super cool and then uh, and you majored in art there or what'd you major in yeah i majored in art and then where do you go after that and then i went to Oh, also footnote to what I just said. Not just diverse because I have black friends, but also of many different shades of all the rainbows. But um, then, okay, then I moved out here because I went to Skowhegan at the end of when I went to Princeton. Uh huh. And Skowhegan changed my life. And then I decided to move here. For everyone who doesn't know, that's. Well, I that's barely it. know. It's an art ca It's an art summer camp program. It's not a camp, summer program. But it's like a camp for adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has many other young adults. Pe yeah. Well, like adult adults. People oh, call people, it like divorce older, camp because older people, people go, go there. there and they. You find out yeah. what's real. <laughs> yeah. Well, I not. I know that about the <laughs> Yale summer program is very uh, a lot of sexual uh, things yeah. occur at that. So I can't imagine Skowhegan is that different yeah but where is it it's in maine where is it yeah it's in maine and so it's like really pretty in the woods or something like that it's very pretty it's very uh dark like optically because there's like a, at night there's just like no light <laughs> okay like, as opposed to yale which is very dark spiritually okay <laughs> but uh yeah i went to Skowhegan in 2012. I went to Yale Norfolk the summer before. Oh, you did the Yale summer program. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, all right. I'm over here talking. Yeah, it's it's definitely similar kind of experience, but different uh, ages and different times in life. So like Yale Norfolk, you can only do that between your like junior and senior year of undergrad. So um, most of the people there, there are a few older people. Most of the people there were 21. And okay. Skowhegan, I was, like, the, one of the youngest people. So, to go from that summer to, like, the next summer was, like, what? I don't have anything to make art about. I'm so young. I don't know anything. Yeah. It's a really different time than now. <laughs> uh, but you really like Skowhegan. And but then, yeah. and then, how does that send you to L.A.? Um, there were just... Or, it was L You moved to L.A. after that. Yeah. There were just a bunch of cool people there who... Um, lived in LA and it just made sense to me. I have family out here and like, I don't know. I was like, where am I going to live? I'm not going to live. I'm not going to go back home. Yeah. I'm not going to go to New York. That's mm. too, the buildings intimidate me. It's, it's not, I just don't vibe with New York. Yeah, I, I don't. I like visiting. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's a fun visit, but I, I could never do it. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. It's very fast paced in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very like. And the people are like, want to <laughs> tell you about. 
maybe I'm wrong about this, but it always seemed like people always want to tell you about all the things they accomplished that day. Like, I went to yoga, and then I did this, mm-hmm. and then I did band practice. And I had to rent a space just to do my band practice, but yeah. we still did it, and we all drove over there, and we got all this stuff. And then I went to work at the co-op store vegan place. And then, like, they just, like, tell you all this stuff, and it's like, I... I maybe did, like, two things today that were pretty good, but... Yeah. You know? So, so you ha- so who did you know out here that made you want to come out here? You know what, actually, before we do that, can I see if the strategy guide to this game is in yeah. here? Yeah. I Where can't even, I, put it? I like, how do you even play the game and talk? Here it is. It? Here we are. Uh, it's, it's an acquired skill, and I'm, and I'm, it's also, my thinking is that if I can interview people while playing a relatively difficult video game, then I'm gonna be really good at interviewing people when I'm not playing mm. a relatively difficult game. That's my, it's like my little training. Like, I watched a video... I watched Outcast behind the music when I was in, like, 12th grade or something, <laughs> uh-huh. and they talked about how they used to make them run around the block and then rap. Yeah. Like, before they were famous, like, when they were, like, making their first album or something. And that was how they got a really good at stage presence. Yeah. So this is sort of, like, my running around the block. Yeah. But when... Uh, in just a second, could you read me this paragraph? I will tell you when to do it. Okay. But I don't know if we're quite there yet. Okay. Let's see. No. So... So you move out to LA. Yeah. And you, where did you, uh, how long were you out here for? I I was out here for three years total with a little break in between Mm -hmm. the, um, so after like the first, I moved here at the end of summer 2012. And then in the summer 2013, I went to New York to work on this Thomas Hirshhorn project called the Gramsci Monument. Who is uh, Thomas Hirshhorn? Tell me who that is, because I don't he's, remember. Um, he's an artist. He's based in Paris, but he, he does things all over. Mm-hmm. And um, he uses a he he does these huge installations. There's a lot of tape. There's a lot of like words. There's a lot of um, like <laughs> this is not a good description of it. He's like um, he does a lot of these. He uses a lot of tape. Okay. He's like. He's like a, I mean, he's been a really important person in my life, but he, he makes these, um, he makes these public works. He mm-hmm. also shows things in, in private spaces, but that's really to do like fun public works and yeah, oh sure. And, and, and also to cover all bases, but he makes these, um, public installations that are open to people. And the, the one I worked on was in a housing project in forest houses. And that was part of this monument series to, uh-huh. it, this was a monument to Antonio Gramsci, the philosopher, and there was three previous monuments to Spinoza, Bataille, and Foucault, and um, his Heavy work. Hitters. Yeah, of his for, he has a thing called his form force field about his work, which is love, politics, aesthetics, and wait, how am I forgetting this? Love, politics, aesthetics. I used to know this by heart. Well, anyway. You can look it up online, but and what did that what did that monument look like? Um, it looked like a giant treehouse kind of. There was like wow. a bunch of um, pallets, and then and then uh, four by eight like plywood, and then it was just built all of two by fours, and it was up for that project as a, one the like runtime of it was eleven consecutive weeks. So I worked for like wow. like seven days. We was teaching this kids workshop. Oh, like so it's very comprehensive. You did stuff within the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. And then there was like speakers who came, and there was like field trips, and there was like it was really interesting. It was really complicated, like politically very complicated. Yeah. Project. Um, so what? Yeah, com- that was like amazing, life changing wow. for me. Yeah. And what other kind of work were you making out here in LA at that time? I really wasn't making any work. Oh yeah. I was writing a little bit, but. N- you know, just for myself, um, I, I, oh, I, I had written, I made my first song then, but I, you know, oh, that's okay. not a song I've ever played right. for more than like three people. Sure. And then, uh, I was working for like Mocha and like some other random internships and then, and then I, yeah, then I came back and then I was a studio manager um, for Petro Cartwright, and then, 
And then I started, oh, and then my friend Tyler, Matthew Oyer, he had a show. TMO. His backyard. TMO. Oh, TMO. Very well. Shout out, TMO. <laughs> yes, girl. And then he had this show in his house, and I did a performance in the backyard, and then I did another performance, and then... I don't know, and then suddenly all these things started happening. Just what were those? What were those about? Perform. Those performances? What were we talking about? Those are really about the same thing that I make all my work about, but less. Those those ones were not um, so political, but they were about one in hundred powers, enjoy repeating, and also midnight stranger. Those performances were all about like kind of just struggling with the basic creative process of like I really want to do something or give something or make something or like what I mm -hmm. like just trying to grasp the ungraspable or the um like yeah thing. What's yeah the thing you want the thing yeah trying to do it trying to do it and like trying and talking about like fear talking about fear a lot and um psychological walls and like generosity um, that's like what, and just like relating to people. Like I always try to in my work, like that's really what my work is about is like relating to people mm -hmm. in the moment of the performance. And these were um, mus more, this is when you're starting to get more into the music side of things, mm -hmm. some singing, mm -hmm. uh, and that's sort of more, more what it looked like with some video. Was there any video to go with the work? Um, not really. They're not so much video that has come in later and like sporadically, but there was um, always costuming, yeah, and all even and like props sometimes, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, so like always that element. And I really for this last show that I just finished doing, I was really excited about like the costume that I made because. Is like all orange, is kind of like Little Red Riding Hood, but like orange, just crop top, oh. with like a skirt, and then this cool like boxing robe jacket, but made out of like orange athletic jersey material. Mm -hmm. So I'm really into clothes, too, like making my own clothes. Oh, yeah. can you read me this little paragraph yeah, yeah, right yeah. here? What does it say to do? Neither High Dawn uh -huh. or the Hedonites are too powerful. Okay, that's it's good. It's just to know. that their poison attacks get obnoxious sometimes. All right, kind of watch I out for that. I had Strago and Realm in the party because I was forced to use them. I had Mog in the yep, party. Yeah, we got him. Because he can equip the Moogle charm. Yeah. But he didn't have much else. Lastly, I had Sabin. I've got Sabin. For me, the entire battle was triangle, 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 bum rush, triangle, 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 bum rush. Triangle, <laughs> cure two, triangle, bum rush. You get the idea. Uh, yeah. And the fight was really easy. Extremely easy. The point I'm trying to make is bum rush kicks ass. On one more note, the boss casts Grand Train eventually. Strago's best lore spell. There we go. All right. Well, then it's going to be pretty easy. Now, I'm hearing you talking about Red Riding Hood for this performance, and then mm -hmm. I watched your performance at Yale, and mm -hmm. I think you mentioned Red Riding Hood in that as well. Or something to Did do it? with the wolf or something. Well, that's Bambi. Bambi, so, right. Bambi. Yeah, so kind of this year, this theme has emerged uh, of uh, this metaphorical theme scene of, like, the woods and, like, hunt hunting. Yes. And hunting sport. Sure. In January, I made this installation at school, and one of the parts of that installation was this costume that was... Um, made of pink like pink real tree camo mm -hmm. um and it was like a contemporary clans woman outfit oh man like these pants that actually are really bomb and i love <laughs> they look great these jeans and then this like vest cut off vest with these like crosses on it and it's like pink um like bright pink with like the real tree camo and yeah. then like a hood and the hood has a little charm on it that says blessed. Uh-huh. Um, and still, like, you know, I still like thinking about that getup. To me, that outfit is, like, I don't know. It's kind of, I think about it in the same way as maybe I think about my book. Like, kind of sci-fi almost. Like, yeah. It's, to, it's actually today. It's, like, things that are possible today 
but it also feels like to me like it exists in the future. Mm-hmm. It's hard to locate like who actually would be wearing this or like what it is. Yeah. Um, and then Run Bambi, that story was really, that was about, um, I feel like in the end that work kind of ended up sort of being about like girlhood or like adolescence or childhood or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but particularly like girlhood, there's this line in Bambi where Bambi's mom is like, man, is in the forest. And right, like that's yes. when the shit starts to go off. And that movie's so yeah, sad. When, the, when, when Bambi's yeah. mom dies. Yeah. So like that was kind of like nature and thinking about man in a gendered way, like man, but also just mankind. Yeah. Uh, although like, you know, the force of the patriarchy is like... And there's a sequence, right? Yeah. And there's a sequence in that where there's some people, some two ladies are doing some like sort of patty cake type stuff, mm-hmm. and they're talking about a guy. He's in a body. He's trying to fix things with his digital. Mm-hmm. Was the line? What was that sequence about? Yeah, he tried to fix it with his digital. He tried to fix it with his trends. He tried to fix it with his like money, but he was still caught up in it. What now, was it? Uh. So it starts with he was walking in a body, he was walking in a body, he was walking in a body, but the body wasn't his. Right. It's just kind of about, like, just a, like, being in a body. <laughs> like, your body is in It's your, crazy. You know, like, your body's just on loan. And I feel like if more people understood that, then, I don't know, some of these, like, issues that we have in this world maybe wouldn't be so much so... Sure. Because it's like, I don't know, like the way I view my body is like, it's weird, you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes sometimes I feel totally one with my body. Other times I really feel like, yeah, I'm just I'm just here on this earth to do whatever it is I'm here to do. And then I'm peace out back to the other part of the universe, sure. the upper heavens or something. Yeah. And like... Yeah, like the spirit and the body is so random. Which body you end up yeah. being born in, or yeah. you know, it's so weird. So that's just that's what that was about. It's like existential. And you're not in, you know. That's we don't get so many choice. You know, we don't get to choose. We don't get to choose to be alive. You know, like right. we don't get to choose our name. We don't get to choose anything. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I wish people. M- I like. I don't, I don't know if I can say, oh, people don't understand that, <laughs> but it's just like, you just kind of look at the world and, <sighs> I don't know. It's like the way the world has been organized over however many thousands of years and mm-hmm. I feel like that sort of large existential scope is definitely so present in so many cultures those cultures have been like dominated yeah and like conquered by other cultures that like don't don't seem to and like religions that don't seem Mm -hmm. to have that sort of i don't know spiritual grounding point of like the spirits the spirits inhabitation within the body is totally by chance and like nobody has to be here and it's like you know like you don't you, you don't have any it's not like you're better than anybody because it's just so random. Yeah. So true. So true. Now, so, yeah. now another work that involves the body quite a bit mm-hmm. is your book, mm-hmm. My Wet Hot Drone Summer, out on Badlands Unlimited. Mm-hmm. And what uh, what made you want to write this book? It's, uh, it's sort of an erotic techno thriller. Mm-hmm. I want to write a book about drones. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of all I remember. I don't, and then from there, I wanted to write a book about drones. I wanted to have a black female protagonist. Um, and then I feel like a lot of the choices that I made in the book were partially just dictated by the form of, of writing, like erotica. Erotica. Yeah. And then also, I was just thinking about like movies. Like, kind of writing it like a movie or something. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> well, I was very into it. I there was a, there's a lot of different uh, like uh, when I was there's a t teacher of mine at CalArts. He teaches pornography is the name of the class, and it's mostly reading erotica. Mm -hmm. And he, the other focus of his um, work is uh, artwork about drones and um, the thing that he talked about so much in pornographic writing is is that is this is sight and being able to see something mm -hmm. and 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 how that's d described over and over again in a lot of erotic works that looking at someone else and seeing them doing whatever sexual mm -hmm. thing they're doing uh and that's you know very i think related to to drones in a way because that's what drones drones do right yeah and it's an interesting book because there's lots of different types of sex. There's some gay sex or some uh, 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 all across the board gay sex or lesbian sex. Um, I thought that was very interesting because I think, you know, in the, the culture of porn in the world, it seems like obviously there's so much quote-unquote girl-on-girl stuff mm -hmm. that exists. And that's mostly f for men to mm -hmm. watch, it seems like to me. Uh, but there isn't, uh, you don't hear a lot about a culture of, um, of women who are really turned on by men making out, you know, mm -hmm. which seems like very possible, you know, if you're attracted to men, yeah, you'd be into it, right? Yeah, I think there's a lot of women. You think so? Who like, yeah, like, well, I think so. Like, I don't watch that much porn. Sure. But, and like, I have watched gay porn, you know, it's just like, you know, with all porn, it's like, you get into some stuff and you're not into other stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think there's probably, like, tons, tons of other women who, like, because, like, yeah, I feel like find men hot, and then to see, like, two hot guys, you know, it's, like, hot. Yeah. It's, like, it's hot, too, I think, also, at least for me, as, like, as, like, a mostly straight woman, mm -hmm. to, like, see... Like men in the, you know, how how would I describe it? Just I don't know why anybody would think that gay sex is like hot. Like it's just it's like hot because sex is hot, and then like it's hot to see like as a woman, it's it's very enticing to like not be in the situation to just see like how is the power dynamics gonna play mm -hmm. out between these two men like. You know, like, there's yes, something... Yes, you, you don't know what's going to happen exactly, And that's also, for like, sure. male penetration that's very, like, I don't know, satisfying. I, I, as, as a as a het woman, it's, like, it's, like, very satisfying to well, me to, like, you see let, that. You <laughs> let go of some cultural, I think, masculinity when you, uh, you do that. that yeah, stuff. it's, like, the vulnerability and mm -hmm. also, like, the... And also, like, yeah, I don't know, I just, it's, it's good. I, I hear wish, what you're saying. I wish that, like, okay, if I could, like, two of my wishes that I would have if I had um, unlimited wishes. Yeah, sure. One would be that all um, men, male body people could experience menstruation for at least five years of their life. <laughs> and PMS. <laughs> or just, like, their whole life. And then... <laughs> Two would just be that, like, everybody could experience consensual, penetrative sex of some kind. Like, every guy at some point yeah. in their life experiences, like, so anal or... Mm -hmm. may maybe, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know... Yeah. I and I you. mean, like... And maybe not just once. Just, like, to get... Yeah, because it's... Just to know what it's like to have someone so... Inside of your body. Yeah, man. Like, so inside your body. It's intense. It's an intense thing. It's so intense. And it's then, really intense. Yeah. I I know. It's, uh... It, uh... I was so funny, though, when I... Like, this is how gay I was. When I was in eighth grade, I shoved a frozen popsicle up my ass because there was it was the most dick-shaped thing in the house. <laughs> and it was, like, really bad, but it was also, like... At the time, I still kind of liked something about it. That was how, like, how much my... 
I needed that in eighth yeah. grade. Having told maybe one person or maybe no people that I was gay, that was like something that happened. It was, it, I always think about that. Like, wow, I really. You went was, for it. That was really going to be part of refreshing. my. Refreshing. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And, uh, and refreshing. And in, and in your book, too, there's a. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but a, a wild sort of science fiction sex toy, right? Yeah. Where'd you get the idea for that? Uh, the, the idea that I got for that, um, actually is from a real, um, a real substance that exists that these, um, engineers at MIT developed a few years ago that is called Xeron. Yes. And so it's this, this material that, um, can be manipulated in three-dimensional space and like hovers around i think by like electromagnetism so, okay wow so yeah i took the idea from something that, that's real yeah. that's out there yeah and so in the book it's like this pleasure object that hovers in 3d space and the, the overall narrative of the book for our listeners is that there is this guy who's trying to use this new drone technology that can see through walls, essentially, mm -hmm. to blackmail politicians? Is that... Yeah, that's more... It's like... That's more or less it. I mean, it's like... And the female protagonist <laughs> is coming in to... to stop him from doing that, essentially. To, yeah. Yeah. It's like... the So the plot is Mia. She's a lawyer. She's working on this class action lawsuit against the mayor of Miami mm -hmm. because he has... Um, authorized just like an egregious amount of police force against the citizens of my uh, some citizens of Miami who have been displaced because of global warming and they're like homeless and so he's like what do we do with them let's just shoot them wow. and so it's just it's extreme future but also I don't know, not that extreme not that extreme could and be so, more extreme really yeah so she's working on this class action lawsuit but then she gets a blackmail threat and then right that's what it is so then she thinks that the blackmail threat is coming from this robotics ceo xavier cerrone and then she goes with her brother who just coincidentally happens to be going out there to pitch to pitch um this new technology what is it called i'm like refresh me <laughs> refresh me on my work uh it's called anyways it's like this x-ray vision basically mm -hmm. and so her it's her stepbrother oh lrx um it's like long range x-ray but um yeah it's her stepbrother she has some tension with him because right. it's her stepbrother. Yeah, they have a history. Ooh, a little cruel intentions. Sure. And then, um, yeah, and then there's some other characters. Billionaire heiress Evangeline Christmas. Right. Heir to the Christ Mart America stores. Sure. And Wes Rivers with his aerodynamic locks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really liked it because it, uh, it reminded me... Uh, I just like when sort of tropes like Pulp Fiction tropes or erotica or sort of B-action movies are end up becoming a platform for the social issues like police brutality and surveillance. Because I think that the people who... I have this theory, uh, check me if I'm wrong, but that a lot of people who are racist are also really stupid. And so they they enjoy action movies and and be and and this type of um uh content which is not necessarily which is i mean everything i love is stupid but in a way but uh uh like you they so then they go and they just sort of consume it and like accept it in this really um uncritical way mm -hmm. right so the first movie that's coming to my mind is would be like they live have you seen they live mm -hmm. john carpenter's they live it's basically about how aliens are brainwashing us to like just accept corporate america and like be soulless uh and uh also the first machete movie which is mostly about uh, immigration mm -hmm. issues and the border but they very much take on this this action movie or b movie uh trope and so they like I feel like people who a lot of people who go see go to see Machete would have have really conservative views about immigration or really just fucked up views about immigration and they sort of see this movie and without really even thinking about it they're like being like brainwashed a little bit you know yeah um but in a good way 
Or maybe brainwash is the wrong word, but they're just forced to think about something they don't normally think about. Yeah. The movie's also really great because Lindsay Lohan plays like a, uh, like a, like a gun-toting nun, I think. I think is what happens in that movie. Man, these monsters are brutal. They keep putting me to sleep. I need to fly to a different part of the country to... What are they even? It's like an eyeball <laughs> with a fur, with fur around it. We gotta get out of here. I feel like they actually wouldn't be that scary if you saw them in real life. Yeah. they don't look like they, they have look kind of cute. You know? They look alright, I guess. And the more legs something has, the scarier. That's true. Why is this... Would, what's, like, the scariest <laughs> animal to you, would you say? Well, this is funny. So, uh, okay, the scariest animal to me is a centipede. Mm -hmm. I hate centipedes. And... Uh, my friend the other day was talking about, like, one of those, like, question quizzes that, like, tells you what you actually think about stuff. Yeah. And the question of what's your least favorite animal and why is what you don't like in relationships. Okay. And what I said about centipedes is because I don't like them because, like, they move too fast and I can't see where they're going. <laughs> that can happen in relationships. Yeah, and I really don't like centipedes. I just, I don't, I don't, they, the legs... Yeah. It's too many. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared of I'm scared of uh, deer ticks. That's like the scariest to me because you can get Lyme disease. Oh yeah, Lyme disease is so scary. Yeah, and it's new. It's like I, like a lot of people think that Lyme disease only exists because of interactions with like pollutants or something like that. Like it didn't used to exist. It's only yeah, it, it's, and it's like on the rise too. It's from Connecticut. Too. That's right. From Lyme, Connecticut, and from a scientist, and. Oh, was that true? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't like know. Like an experiment, like gone wrong. That's or what something. it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. I, th I wow, that's a insane. Yeah, it's freaky. I mean, that stuff is free okay. So I just came on the plane, and I'm wondering, like, is, I mean, okay. First of all, there's been like so many terrorist attacks. So, just what I, I'm about to say with a grain of salt, but like, can I can I take the ball of water on the plane yet? Like, I don't know. Like, that seems so outdated to me, that we still can't bring... Bring liquids. Liquids, because it just, to me, it seems like, I don't know, there's so many other things I can think of. Like, yeah, like bio, what's, like, bioterrorism, and, like, in mm -hmm. the, like putting something in a tick, or water. I oh, just yeah, feel putting like... putting something in a tick. I just I feel like that. the, like, being cautious about the orange juice, like, we're gonna get blindsided. I don't yeah. know. Like a person, like TSA could be blindsided. I don't know. It's nuts. It's really nuts. It's like, no, oh, I don't know. Everything that's going We're on. We're in wartime. We are. We. I mean, it's just It's just a never-ending, um, it's just like a never-ending thing. And I just, I really think it like has a lot to do with like, cause people always try to like blame it on video games or blame it on uh, uh, like, Stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like TV shows and movies. And I think there's probably something to that. I think a lot of it, though, too, is just that, like, remember when Columbine happened when we were kids and everyone really freaked out? Like, it was like a huge national tragedy yeah. that people were talking about for months. Yeah. And they made movies and documentaries and books and millions and millions yeah. of things. And, like, that basically just showed, I feel like that really showed people that, like, you can do this thing, this, like, horrible thing, and then you can become, like famous you know yeah. you can become you can become known or you can matter or you can exist because i think a lot of people care more about what other people think of them than they do about themselves and so and they just want to they just want to like be somebody you know like this is this like warped sense of that that's my right it's one of my theories Taxi about driver. it about it with the with the mass mass shootings and then the other shootings is just fucking I, I mean i don't know yeah, I mean, I, I always just, like, forget about that reality of it, that, like, yeah, the people seeking fame, and, I mean, but, like, of course, like, of course, of course, that's, that's it, too. I just and, don't like, think those... Seek power, you know, like, getting yeah. power. I was just reading an article the other day about just, like, mass shooters and how much, like, domestic abuse often plays into their really histories. Domestic, I've heard that with a couple of people yeah, but domestic abuse or like a history you know of like abuse being neglected and also um like a, a lot of extreme misogyny like uh 
so many, like, a, like a bunch of, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Omar Mateen, Dylan Roof, the guy in Santa Barbara, I can't remember his name. Yes. But, like, writing these, part of their manifestos always includes, like, e- either something, like, hating women or, like, wow. a backwards, a, like, a backwards patriarchy oh, thing. Oh, like, God. Well, like, ugh, so, yeah. Hate so, uh, I hate it. I, I mean, we're, yeah, I mean, we, it I, fills me with great sorrow, yeah, and profound spiritual disappointment. So, maybe going a little, a little lighter. Was I, it I was watching <laughs> some of your videos, and I was watching a video, I think it was called White Houses 2. Uh-huh. And it's a lot of movement, you in this sort of uh, like bamboo, there's like plants mm-hmm. and around and stuff and it's like very pretty and there's like some white sculptures around and you're wearing all mm-hmm. white and then it ends with you on uh, like a like one of those rides you put like 25 cents in mm-hmm. like outside the supermarket mm-hmm. what tell me a little bit about why it and wh- wh- how what why does it end like that mm, I wanted to make it this like I think, well, whenever I make a video, I make the footage and then, you know, it becomes completely different than what it is. So while I was editing it, it just, to me, seemed like, oh, I can make it like a dream sequence. I like to do, um, like, screens and screens and, like, play Mm -hmm. around with the interaction of different, like, rectangles on, in one screen. Yeah. So, um... I just sort of like this idea of this like recursive like dream in a dream falling asleep because I have a lot of dream dreams in dreams often. Oh okay. And then, and then, it was kind of like that. So that day when I was shooting, I was at Huntington Gardens, and then, and then I, I don't know how I ended up there. Mysteries of video making. I just was like that was a dollar store like across from uh, where I used to live, uh-huh. and um. I guess it's just like waking up from waking up from a dream. Yes. Like waking up from this like beautiful dream of uh, this like palatial like sort of estate or something. <laughs> right. It was very. It had that type of vibe to it. Yeah. And, and uh, you're wearing all white. And yeah. It's very. It's very pretty. Yeah. And then you have another video where you're in a bathtub. Uh huh. Talking about money. Uh huh. And in a very erotic way, mm-hmm. or some, yeah, I would definitely say erotic way, and mm-hmm. something about big fat wads of cash. What was the genesis of that video? Oh, that video was really fun. I was just, I was at my parents' house, and I was in the bath, and I just was just recording myself for like five hours wow. in, the, in the bathtub, like just doing all these characters. I just have a lot of footage from that that I still like need to like edit. So a lot of times I film stuff and then like I just like don't do anything with it for a while. Yeah. But there's like a, some other parts where I'm singing with a ukulele and and like kind of talking about uh, um, mm, I can't exactly remember what, but sort of like this same like uh, like very bougie woman. Yes. And and yeah, I just like to play characters sometimes. Mm-hmm. And did that get shown anywhere? Or because that seemed like one that would be like no. sort of like a. Like a good gallery one because it's kind of like a minute long. You yeah. Know? You can kind of come into it at any point. Yeah. That one has not been shown anywhere. Um. Yeah, that one hasn't been shown anywhere. I was just talking to somebody the other day about like, do I need to get more of my stuff on Instagram or something? Like, what's up? Like, maybe I do. Like, you the wait. What's the question? There. Oh, to get more views. Yeah. To like, I'm oh, like the views. You know, like. You make all this, you do all this work to make your work, and then you're like... And then how, and then what's the payoff, you know? Yeah, or you just, like, want more people to see it, or, like, know about it, or something. I know the feeling. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been, um... Do you know Joanne, the scammer? Are you familiar with Joanne? Oh, mm-hmm. she's great. She's a, tw- she's a new, she's one of those new Twitter, Instagram stars. Um, um, she's all about being a Caucasian woman, mm-hmm. though she's very clearly a... A black man, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, 
she's she's like to run scams and one of her scams was that she went to a wedding of people she didn't know uh uh stood up during the objections and promoted her instagram and i was thinking what can i do to promote my instagram <laughs> yeah so i think what i'm gonna do maybe tonight is i've been playing pokemon go lately mm -hmm. and one of the things you can do in pokemon go is put out little pokemon lore so all the pokemon come to one place and then of course all the pokemon trainers come into one place because this is the most insane video game event that's like pretty much ever occurred like people will just start like 20 people will just pop out of the woodwork on the spot just blow up the spot and then i'll just do like a dj set right there that was my that was my that's a great idea my uh little promotional promotional idea but yeah i don't know I, and then you see and then you start comparing the likes and the followers and you know it just gets gets brutal because you know like we all know like a couple people who have like that have that thing you know where they have like a bunch of followers or whatever yeah know. it's just like and now everyone's saying Instagram is like dying down and now Snapchat is really like the one. What? Snapchat takes so much effort though. I know you really have to go like live your life to do Snapchat. That's why I, I that's why like, I haven't gotten on it. Like it's just it's like too much. Like I uh, I always get like worried because I it's like you have to be you have to have some it's like do you? I don't know. Maybe you don't, but don't you have to like have things like be very present in social media today but that's like a that's an entire that's a skill set you know uh -huh. like that's a real skill set yeah. and for so much to be reliant upon that particular skill set i don't know it just freaks me out I like it's just how i like hope it is there's it's still like... people out there who like that's not the first place they turn yeah you know? and just the people who just they just do the work and like like so I, website, still, like... I still think there's something you have a really nice website i was Thank really you. impressed uh, um but you know it's definitely it's definitely gotten to uh that point where you know now people are just uh just and now also too the thing is like controversies and dramas seem to really sort of uh, help people was he just a little bit. Rocks? Wow, that was in, he like opened up a little portal to another dimension there. That was like way more than I thought like a like a like a T Rex could do. Wow, these are these guys are killer. This is not good. I'm gonna die. Let's see. Hopefully not. Let's see if we can get our guys back alive here. Uh, yes. Wait. So what is this more about strategy? Oh, shit. Or is it about... Because it doesn't seem like it's about punching buttons fast. It is not about punching buttons fast. It's sort of like... Um, it's sort of like just figuring out how to... Uh, like... I guess... Oh, that was really bad. I died. I didn't save after that last boss. But I bet I can beat him right now. Um, it's, it's like... Uh, yeah, it's like strategy. It's like some monsters are weak to ice. Some... Some character, it's sort of like an RPG, like, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, maybe something like that, a little bit, where it's more, there's a time component, like, if I just sit here and do nothing, these guys will kill me, mm -hmm. but it's more about thinking about, like, okay, like, I'm gonna do this move, because I'm fighting these monsters, but, uh, uh, it's not really, like, it's not really that much about hand-eye coordination or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Which, and it's also about story. Like, these games are really heavy on story. Like, basically the premise of this game is that, uh, magic doesn't really exist anymore, and the government is trying to reverse engineer these magical creatures to make weapons, and you are trying to, you are the resistance movement that's trying to stop them. Whoa. That is the essential beginning plot of this game. But Classic then it, plot. But then it, yeah. Then it goes uh like uh then like the bad guy kind of like over basically causes like this mass sort of cataclysm where you lose all the characters you've become friends with up to that point and have to like go through and like do them all again also after that happens also classic life plot yes <laughs> go find all your friends again yeah <laughs> This game was kind of a big deal, I think, partially because the, the, this character, I named her Deborah, but her real name is Celez, uh, in, usually, uh, 
there's a part in the game where she attempts suicide, and I don't think anyone had seen that on a Super Nintendo or really any mm-hmm. video game platform before, and like gone that far with storytelling and and everything, and uh, and it's very like emotional and 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 pretty well done considering the graphics. This game is over 20 years old. Um, it's from the 90s. That's crazy. But uh, it's like, it's, wait, that means I'm over 20 years old. Yeah. <laughs> so so what? Uh, wait. So we didn't talk, I don't think we've talked at all about you, because you eventually went to Yale, right? Yes. For so, what department were you in? I'm there now. Oh, you still, oh, you're, you just did one year, so mm-hmm. you were going to go I'm back there. I'm through, yeah. I'm in the sculpture program. With, uh, is Martin still there? Mm-hmm. He was a teacher of mine at CalArts. He adopted mm-hmm. a kitten from me once, which was really, really helpful. <laughs> full-grown cat, actually. It was a full-grown cat. Which are a lot harder to place, and he still has, still has Babylon. I think her name's. I think he na- re- they renamed her Bella, but uh, that was that was great. And it was for my third year. My third year show at college was to live in a gallery with trying to find a home for the cat, and then he adopted the cat, so it, it worked. But anyway, you're at Yale, mm-hmm. um, and how's that? How was it getting in there? Because I know they they, they make you do they, <laughs> they make you do like a PowerPoint to get in, right? Or they make you present your work. Yeah. And yeah. how did that go? Um, that was great. That me. went great. I had a great interview. That was like, I mean, when I was deciding which school to go to, I picked you because I had the best interview experience there. Oh, it was like, great. I had like fun. I mean, I sang at the end of my interview. I was nervous because I get nervous before anything, but I think as a performer, like doing an interview like that, it was like mm-hmm. not that, you know, it wasn't maybe as scary as it might be if you're mostly like just working in your studio and not having to you know like be your work in yeah. front of like mm-hmm. a group of people yeah. so yeah Yale is I mean the program I really like the people hey guys I really like the people in my year and I and I, I like your second years and I like our faculty um but the school is going through a lot of changes right now. The School of Art. School of and, Art. Uh huh. And also Yale as a school, though there are issues. Like last fall, um, there were all these protests led by undergraduates and started by um, st- and the protests were started by undergraduate women of color yeah. and undergraduate black women, um, and gaining traction around some racist things that had happened and then also trying to change the name of Calhoun College and then I don't know if you're following the story about I Corey think, I think I saw some stuff on um, on the internet this is was, was Yale the school that had the issues with the Halloween cost the Halloween costumes uh-huh. that was Yale yeah and that was like because people were what they were told they couldn't dress in racist costumes and they got mad or something that they couldn't yeah. do the racist costumes and then some people <laughs> right and then so then we started having all these like they're called diversity meetings, and I really oh, yeah. think they need to have a different name. But, like, some people, and, you know, there was, like, some, ter- like, I would say it's probably, like, 60 to 70% turnout in the school, in the total school of art of for, like, these diversity things. That's... And some people, like, didn't even, but some people didn't understand. They were, like, they were upset because they were, like, what? I didn't even know people dressed up in racist costumes. And I'm, like, yes! Like, hello, wake up to America. Like, you know, don't you go on the internet and see this stuff? Yeah. But, so, I mean, that made it a crazy year. And, I mean, New Haven is very... I've been there. Tense and complicated. It's kind of, and it's kind of boring, too, maybe. It's, yes, it's boring My... and tense, which is, like, the worst combination. Yeah. There's one comic book store. That's what I remember about visiting. I was like, oh, if I went to Yale, I could go to this comic book store. But there's no, like, gay bars or anything really around, so I was kind of like... Yeah. There's, like, a couple, but they're not, you know... They're not that fun. Swinging. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... And so... And so they're doing the diversity meetings. What's changing about the School of Art? Well, we're getting a new dean. So Martin's leaving. Martin's not the dean. Oh, what is he He's doing? He's a head of the sculpture program. There we go. That's I what mean, it is. I mean, he's the dean. Yeah, if you're watching this right now, Martin, he's the, he's the interim dean right now. Uh, but we're getting a new dean, Marta Kuzma. Rob Store retired. And then in the sculpture program, uh, two of our faculty, main faculty members uh, had their last year this year. And so we're getting... Um, 
so we're having new people next year and, and I don't know how long they'll stay. So it's just like a lot of transition and then like a bunch of other faculty in the painting program is leaving. And um, yeah. so it's just like, so this year I think was challenging for me because I was dealing with the just transition from LA to New Haven is really insane. different. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, starting grad school and then on mm. top of that there was like a i think there was a lot of energy of ending because all these people are leaving you know it's their last year so there's like right, the faculty of, but coming in when when something's ending is like is it and then also just this year in the world has been very hard oh yeah and then me personally i've been going through a lot of it really feels like a time of like death and rebirth for me. Like I can tell you, like to, like throughout these like performances, this feels like something really like a whole year that is like ending. A time is like ending for me, and I think a new thing is beginning, and I'm really excited to like. That's good. Feel the light, let it shine again. Yes. Because like I I've like shed a lot of skins. Yeah, but and New Haven too is really racially comp or mm -hmm. rough right because mm -hmm. it's not it's a it's there's kind of some i mean you could tell me more about it than I yeah don't know. it's well new haven is uh i don't know what the exact numbers on it are but i it's like mostly black is like the or actually i don't even know if that's true we should look this up on wikipedia because i feel like one time i looked it up and said like the demographics were like 30 percent black 30 percent hispanic okay and like th and 30 percent white and then some you know odds and ends but like uh but yeah it's uh definitely around the university most of the people in new haven are black and um and the university, most people at the university working as faculty are white. Oh, yeah. But most of the uh, staff is black. Oh, like the, like, like custodial staff. Yeah, and, and like, yeah. dining workers. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the other thing about New Haven, or just Connecticut in general, is Connecticut, I think of all the states in the country, has the biggest uh, disparities, wealth disparities, because you have all the money from like new york people living in in right in, like you course. know greenwich and stuff and then some parts of the state are it's so psycho like driving around it'll be like you're on one street with like super rundown project houses and then at the end of the street it's like really like uh very affluent rich homes like on the same street yeah it's like the, it's like and it's very it's just it's it feels it's very aggressively apparent the like vast differences in in income and in wealth and to be almost to feel how arbitrary that is like to feel how arbitrary something like wealth kind of is at, at oh sometimes. yeah it's you're born like, into it or you kind of right i mean you can you can you know you can come up or whatever you want to set call it mm -hmm. but uh yeah be a lot of it is yeah. you know you start you know, you get, you kind of, a lot of the times not. <laughs> yeah. And in most cities, like in LA, which is so huge, there's tons of different neighborhoods, but the, per just going through them, you know, it takes a while. Yeah. Time-wise. But in New Haven and in Connecticut, it's just like, you know, in two seconds. And it's yeah. really like, that's crazy. That feels so crazy. And then there's also just... Um, this history around New Haven Green that's very um, this is a very dark history it used to be um, like there was a bunch the the um, indigenous tribe the native tribe is the uh, Quinnipi Quinnipiacs mm -hmm. and um, there are people the Quinnipiac people who are like executed there and beheaded there by colonists and it, it was a burial ground. Yeah. So there's, a, there's all this, like... When I got there, I mean, it really felt like getting to one of those places in, like, a in a, like a sci-fi or, like, horror movie where you're like, something's weird here. Like, you could feel that energy. Yeah. Um, so, all in all, this year was as challenging for me, to be honest. Yeah. 
Um, but I'm really excited about next year. I'm excited to do some of the school of drama because I used to want to be an actor when I was. A yeah, kid. and a lot of your a lot of your work is uh, is in that uh, theatrical in that, in that realm, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, what else? Uh, do you have any other projects coming up, or yeah, we could plug. Yeah, plug, plug. Uh, well, let's just plug the book again. Yeah, everyone plug the book. You can. It was so cool because like, you can buy it on Amazon and can meet your house in two days. Two days. You can be hot and sweaty in two days. Yeah, it's, it's a perfect it's, read for August. It is. It was a great. It was a great summer read. It's a quick read. Uh, it it was. It's it's spicy. It's sensual. A lot of my friends have been reading this with their boyfriends, girlfriends, partners. Sure. In bed. Getting inspired. So I suggest this as cute bedtime cute mm -hmm. slash hot sweaty bedtime with your so or otherwise yeah. um <laughs> but so i'm going to switzerland whoa on uh, two weeks which is cool wait also if anybody's in berlin or amsterdam can i stay with you yeah because <laughs> i need to figure that out and i'm going to i'm going to switzerland i'm a fellow at this program called summer academy at the paul clay center in Bern. And so I'm going to be working with Thomas Rochon again, but this time go. not working on an art project. It's just like for um, young artists. So I think it's like 15 of us. I'm really excited for that. And then I'm doing a project at the ICP in New York in September. And and then, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Then You've got to be in school. school. Yeah, and then I'll be in school. That's a lot to do in, in one summer. Yeah, and then I'll be in school. And then, um, yeah, and then just being in school. I think, you know, what I really would love to do this year is, like, write a play mm -hmm. and produce a play. I was amazed at all the line memorization just for the 30-minute piece you did, the ba Run Bambi. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, I, that was a lot of words to remember. It was yeah. impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, everyone, also check out. You can see a lot more of Lex's work also on our website, lexbrown.com. Lexbrown.com. Or on my Instagram. I don't like. You have like what? an Instagram where you like. You know, you keep up on it. My Instagram is like. Not whatever. You know, but, I shouldn't. I shouldn't shade my. But own what? Instagram. But what is your Instagram? My Instagram is lex underscore brown underscore, and my website is lexbrown.com. I'm Lex Brown. Twitter? Do you do Twitter? Uh, I have a Twitter, but I always forget the password. It's yeah. like a passive Twitter where, like, other stuff, I just, like, Oh, yeah, it, it automatically sends to it. From yeah, 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 Oh, yeah, I've done, like, I do that. Twitter is, like, I never really figured Twitter out. It's it's just stand-up, it's like stand-up comedy. That's, like, the <laughs> trick of Twitter. You have to imagine, it's, like, a certain, it's, like, I mean, it's not, it's its own brand of comedy, but that's how you get yeah. on Twitter is by being, like, funny. Okay. And, uh... It's, like, it's, like, a kind of thing where, like, I feel like I think about funny stuff all the time, but I'm, like, driving, you know? Yeah, you gotta put it in your back or pocket like, and then remember to I'm do like, it. I'm like, do you ever feel like when you're on your phone, it's like your brain gets locked into this weird brain wave and it's like... My therapist often says that it. going on Facebook can be the equivalent of doing less than nothing. Because if you were sitting there doing nothing, you would like be sort of like meditating and reflecting. Mm -hmm. And at Facebook, you're just being thrown all this like... really intense, at times really boring... Uh, information and uh, not having to really react to it for anyone, so it's 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 a different it's a whole different mind mind space. I also find mm. people that that I become that I'm like Twitter friends with or Twitter or Instagram friends with or even Facebook friends with uh, that like we post on each other stuff a lot. You get like shy. I get shy to see them sometimes in public. That's another, oh. weird, that's another weird thing I have. Interesting, because I don't think I I don't have any internet friends. Who I'm only friends with on the internet, but yeah. not in real life. I kind of want those. I so, I have developed a few friendships, uh, like, pretty impressive, really, you know, become substantial from that. Yeah. I can't, it's so funny, because remember in the early days of the internet, it was like, don't ever meet up with anyone you meet on the internet. Yeah. That's what they would always say. I don't have any, I, okay, that's like, okay, my new year, new me, I want more internet friends. I want more internet friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> this has been another episode of Let's Gay. I'm Johnny Jungle Guts, the top notch gamer. Everyone, come to Precinct on August 20th for Smash Brothers. It's going to be uh, really fun. There's going to be Smash Brothers tournaments, and we're going to be playing Chip Tune. 
Nightcore, all the things you gamers need to get through life. Bring your DS, you can street pass. It's going to be great. All right, see you guys soon. We upload twice a week.